Thank you all. All right, well, let's dive into the presentation, and then after Russell's done, we'll switch it around. So Arbrins has spoken here before. Is this your second time? Third? Third time. And season pro. He did an ad hoc one one time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Throw the dice. Yeah. Cool. All right. Take it away, Arbrins. All right. So first off, we're doing a small game slash icebreaker slash just chaos testing. Um, and it is about incident response. So everybody's going to get a roll. I'm going to go over the guidelines, and then you have five to ten minutes to to make it happen. Uh, so if you do not want to participate, can you raise your hand? Perfect. Someone's not going to participate because there's too many people. Alright. <laughs> Cat-like reflexes coming. <laughs> Leave, follow, or get out of the way. So, I also chose candy because of Halloween, and this is going to be sweet. So, next slide, please. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oops, if I go to the right window. It's going to be a very manual process. <laughs> uh, next, uh, I think we need to go to guidelines, wherever that's at. Game, guidelines. Perfect, there we go. Space bar usually goes down a whole yeah, it oh, does. You went too far now. <laughs> <laughs> Erase what you just saw. You just ignore that. All right. Now, so the security team, you know who you are. Um, you don't get to talk to people much. You're just not allowed to. But whoever your card says, wherever you are, it will tell you who you're allowed to talk to. It doesn't mean that those people are allowed to talk to you, though. Uh, and then the security team, in order to eradicate the threat, you have to know every incident Every instance of lateral movement. Lateral movement occurs from the affected person every time they talk to someone, and then that's like a, a now malware piece, and it keeps spreading. So blue team, whoever you are, have to determine how it's spreading by talking to the people that you're allowed to talk to. Um, and we are right of boom. Uh, also, production is probably down. Um, there is probably someone who will tell you why it's down, how to fix it. You may or may not should listen to them. Um, and again, you have to go through the, your contacts in the organization. And then uh, red team, you know who you are? Your job is to track from the initial effect, infection all the way through. And I will, uh, actually the person who says you're the initial infection probably should raise your hand. Perfect. <laughs> uh, but that doesn't mean he's the only infection. There are other infection vectors um, you've probably already read about. And so, yeah, uh, it's going to be chaotic. You got five minutes, uh, and red team wins if the blue team does not get the exact amount of infection. So, how, good. how should they start? Uh, let's start by saying just the, the title. Um, of your card. So, why don't we start with you? Analyst. Security manager. Engineer. VP of engineering. Ooh. Analyst. VP of production. VP of operations. Nice. Team lead. General manager. Team lead. Perfect. I'm a general manager, too. Yes. Cool. Can I cards? I'm out of cards. <laughs> That's fine, I'll just watch. But he, he doesn't get to play either, so I'm sorry. For spectators. I, I had to come up with like an amount that I thought was going to be here, and I was off my two, so sorry. Uh, so you know who you're allowed to talk to now? Um, I will put a timer on so we don't bog down just the rest of the presentation. You're just going to move around. Yes, you should move around. And go. Yes. Uh, is 
it, are we correct that the uh, communication channels were asymmetric? Uh, yes, you could talk to some people, but they, they did not want to talk to you. They didn't want to talk. Okay. Like okay. the CEO doesn't want to talk to just random people and so on. Anyways, uh, let's start off with pointing out the adversary. Who do you think the adversary is? You. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> any, any guesses? Any guesses? None? Oh, it was Ben. So. Alright, how many lateral movements did you get? I talked to nine people. Nine people. How many people did the blue team detect? I wore a red shirt. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he knew beforehand. He knew beforehand. So, what was the other question? Security engineer? Security manager? Who was that? Oh, nice. So that's like a real-world scenario. That, that is actually what would happen. They would get no information or all the information. Who was the CEO? How chaotic was it for you? <laughs> what, what were you? Oh, okay. All right. The first dish. Uh, termination precedes the notice of breach. <laughs> that's a that's an interesting firing. Not not the security team, uh, but it's cool. Uh, any other questions about this before we, we dive in? It, that was just meant to be fun and to be very chaotic before. All right. You had that much fun in last month. Oh my gosh, we're going to talk about it. So this is the NIST incident response cycle. You have preparation. That is what everybody should be doing anytime there is not boom, um, which is the, the act of exploitation. Once you have detected this, you are dragged or pulled into the detection and analysis. You are then determining how much of a spread, what kind of attack this is. Um, and as you continue to discover, you're then doing containment, eradication, and recovery. And this is a cyclical loop because you will find out that the next user was infected by another user who was infected by another user. And you will continue that until you are finally recovered totally um, or rebuilt totally. And uh, then hopefully you have productive lessons learned. And uh, next slide. Uh, we can skip this one for now. Yeah. All right. Now, this is a what not to do. So please take all of this with the advice of what not to do first, and then hopefully I will explain um, why that is bad and give you some fun examples. So do not try the next. Do not try to prevent an incident, and do not try to prepare for an incident. These will end up futile. Uh, next slide. So when you're preparing for an incident, if your core business relies on a single communication, um, like HTTP, just something very basic, but you cannot complete any of your business without that, and you decide that I'm not going to have any backup systems, and you are totally encrypted by ransomware, you have made a poor decision. Have dedicated survivor computers if everything relies on a single system. That way you can come back and start business again right away. <laughs> this kind of goes into the disaster recovery, business continuity, um, out-of-band communications. Had a nice, fun example where someone didn't know what out-of-band communications meant. Um, this was a finance person that was making all the decisions. And then on top of that, uh, when we were starting to get to the initial infection, the initial vector, that uh, that person started freaking out because they started communicating, or the that person started communicating with us on a different phone system, and none of us knew what was legit or not, um, and we actually thought that the phone had been compromised, and this was a much more like sophisticated attack. It turns out her phone battery died for her company phone, and she just switched to a personal phone, and nobody knew what was going on. So, and then have manual authentication. If you're relying on somebody that's remote, uh, potentially have a second backup option, especially if you're on the security side or the, the management side. You can have ways to identify that this is a real scenario 
and we need to authenticate manually over like a phone system or something, and like have a, a code word. Like it's Guppy. it's okay. Pineapple. Pineapple. <laughs> What'd you say? Guppy. Guppy. Yeah, you can do whatever. I wouldn't do those since this is recorded. Next slide, please. <laughs> Do not try to prevent an incident. But seriously, use MFA, use MFA, use MFA. Uh, and when you do, make sure that it is applied to every level that you can authenticate to. Not just web browsers, but API and PowerShell. Active or Exchange Online makes it to where you do not need MFA if you uh, have not enabled that option. And that was, that was one of the attack vectors here. Uh, and then also don't assume that your proxy is going to stop malware. Uh, that may or may not have been told to me. And the next day I wrote a like, simple C2 server that called out and pretty much said, give me a command. I just ran who am I and showed, hey, you can pull proxy information fairly easily and automate it and not ever have to uh, intervene manually. So. Yeah. Next, go into detection and analysis, and then the boom is coming. Because like I said before, it drags you in, or you step in willingly. And a lot of these people got dragged in, uh, let a third party know that our intelligence had showed active ransomware gang activity on their network. How do we know this? Well, we have threat intel providers that were doing a really good job, and we knew uh, named pipes that were being created by Cobalt Strike be Beacons. We knew server names, we knew usernames, and we knew some other private sensitive information. That's pretty telling. If you're telling the third party this, you would think they would say, oh, we haven't given this information, we haven't given our topology to you, so why, why would you do this? Instead, next, uh, Friday, Thank you for letting us know. The AV scan went, no problem, we saw nothing. We consider this case closed and your threat source suspect. My favorite thing that happened was waking up Monday morning to the next slide. This was an exact quote. We are a victim of ransomware. They decided that Windows Defender or McAfee or whatever they were using was good enough to press the quick scan and that would solve all their problems. Uh, so if you get credible threat intelligence, try to act on it. You might not be in the position where you can act on it. Uh, these people definitely were. We were talking to their security people. <laughs> uh, but if you get somebody who's telling you your own topology, maybe they might know something. Next, please. Uh, going into containment, eradication, recovery. <sighs> this one is, this one's fun. Next. So, when you told security, aka me on the team, to shove it, um, and then Monday morning came and I was just really giddy, I was happy, even though I'd been working for quite a few hours at that point, uh, the geo-blocking was brought up as, well, we added preventative measures. This was done after Monday morning to, to try to contain whatever spread they, they had going on, um, even though they were fully encrypted at that point. They also decided to turn off the internet, unplug the router, because that also might make all the encryption go away. Uh, this went on for about a week, um, four days to be exact, and finally they said, we've contacted a forensics company. Um, until we find out from this forensics company, next slide, uh, that a beacon was detected on the domain controller, DC domain controller, sorry. Uh, have no fear, their IT team deleted that VM completely, which also means that all forensics has gone out of the window. Do not delete things that your forensics company hasn't told you to delete. Uh, so we, they ended up having to do a greenfield rebuild uh, because we could not be sure where the infection was, what it had spread to. And so they took off everything offline re-imaged everything individually on a separate network, bought a new router and firewall combo, because <laughs> it was a small business, and then hooked up everything. 
Did it work? Yes. Was it completely unnecessary? Absolutely. Um, and then their firewall with default logging properties meant that we didn't catch anything but IP addresses and size of packets, no PCAT files. Unfortunately for them, the or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, uh, we did detect that they had 100 gigs exfiltrated from their firewall logs. Uh, we couldn't detect anything else, but that was about all that we could have. It was quite beautiful. Very glad it wasn't my company, but just a third party that we were trying to assist, and they did not want assistance. Incident non-response. Next, please. So in the post-incident activities, uh, you would think that after seeing this unfold, everything that we've, we've tried to help with the forensics company that they hired tried to help, that they would decide to take security seriously. Well, this has happened to a couple of different third parties at this point. Um, none, like this isn't all just one company. These are kind of a conglomerate of things. So two main things happen. One, next slide. They decided to spend a lot of money without a plan. One company went and hired MDR, or hired an MDR company to outfit everything. And then they bought some other like expensive firewalls, some extra IDSs, and didn't really have a plan for this, but it's in their infrastructure now, and it's probably doing things. But they, they probably didn't need it because MFA probably would have solved most of their problems. Uh, and then the other one was lightning won't strike twice, right? So we're good. They're, they're not going to come after us. They, we didn't pay the ransomware, so why do we do that? do that again? We're good. So don't take these options. Try to make a plan, especially if you are given some budget, and hopefully you will have a better response to your incidences if you have them. Uh, I think that's all. Yeah, that is all. Cool. Any questions? Yes. Did you guys levy any requirements or penalties or uh, like business type of business relation? Not really. We we did send out best practices to the rest of the network, but uh, the only I think the only penalty was that dedicated survivor is if you don't have this, we can't really help you stay up. We have to do a disconnection to protect ourselves. Did you say the ransomware was successful? It was in, successful in one. They just they did not care about us at all. The second one, when we told them the topology, they were like, oh, we'll do some more digging. <laughs> Anybody else? Cool. I've got to say, I really like how you put together these cards and the interaction. 